don't shoot pictures in the middle of the day. Well, that's something you can throw out the window for straight away. If you're around in the middle of the day, look for pictures. This is in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And you can see from the shadows coming down that the light, it's not midday, but it's quite early morning, I think. And the light is beautiful, and it just makes the picture. If that had been in shadow, there wouldn't be a picture. It's only the light that makes it. You've got to look for this all the time. You must never stop looking for where the light's coming from. This is Stowe in Vermont. It had been a blank, horrible, dull day. I'd been to the ski, ski area, and I looked down, and back in the town of Stowe, I saw the sun come out. So I got on a bus and raced down to the town, I ra- literally ran around this town taking pictures because the light was like this. This is the end of the day. This picture was sold quite a few times because it, it says so much about Vermont in the winter. It's the clapboard houses, it's nice colours. It tells the story. There's only three words that sum up all the photography, all the television, all the theatre. Tell the story. Blake Matheson in South Island, New Zealand, with Mount Cook in the back. Again, this was a case of getting up, seeing that the sun was out. We skipped breakfast. We just ran. Took this. Half an hour later, clouds had rolled in and the water was all blown. So it was all rippled. There was no reflection. I had a half an hour window to shoot that, which is long enough, but you have to place yourself. You have to make the effort. You have to get there. If you don't get there, you can't take the picture. Perito Moreno Glacier in Patagonia, Argentina. And I had to, this is on a boat, taken from a boat, on a 300 mil lens. And I had to wait for the sun to come through the ice. Only when the sun came through would you get this intense blue. And as intense like I fiddled it with Photoshop, it's actually not as intense as standing there, I can assure you. It's remarkable. Don't take pictures in the rain. Oh, that's another thing you can throw away. This is in Costa Rica, um, near uh, the volcano Arenal. And we went for a, an organised tour walk. It was the easy way. And all the clouds rolled in, and then the sun just came out in the distance. And it just made that picture. It's very threatening, forbidding. could be anything, but it's a travel picture. Moving on to Kyoto in Japan. This is the largest Tori gate in Kyoto, maybe Japan. I know this well, so I knew where the light would be. Late afternoon, it strikes this. It had just been painted. It's only painted once every 25 years. And just the colour contrast just makes it, as well as the the light. And the light is again coming from 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. It's just this angle like that or like that. There's an old adage again. Get the sun over your shoulder, which a lot of professionals say, oh, it's the worst thing you can do. Sometimes it's the best thing you can do. A man in Jordan, this was on an organised thing. I didn't have any to say about where we went or what time we went. But we just happened to go to the main mosque and it was like that. It was early morning and I thought, wow, fantastic. The light again. If the light had been behind because we'd gone at the end of the day, there would not have been a picture. Well, there would have been one, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been as good or pleasing as that. Amalfi in Italy, we were staying there, so I knew I, did a, I could work it out where the sun would be. And it picks up on all this beautiful gold mosaic uh, later in the day. And the 12 apostles are all lit. You couldn't do, this as, well, you couldn't do it as well in television or theatre. This is as good as it gets with lighting. Reykjavik in Iceland. Uh, I was on, again, another organised trip, and I... We were going past this, and I said, stop the bus, stop the bus. There was 20 people, and they were, we were anxious, we've got to get to um, our next thing. I said, You've got, I've got to get off. <laughs> so I got off, as did everybody else, of course, and took advantage of it. But it was just the light again. If it had been dull, if it had been backlit, I wouldn't have bothered. But because it was lit in this way, I had to get off and I had to stop this bus with 20 people on, get off and take the pictures. Again, picture in the rain in Kyoto. This was... Uh, my first trip to Japan, which was 1987, 24 years ago, obviously on film. And it was in rain, but it's very atmospheric. It, uh, it says to me a lot about Japan. It's muted colours. It's not all garish. You've got to think in colour terms as well, because they impact on light a lot. Cook Islands, Itataki. This was a day trip out to a further island called One Foot Island. You were there, you got there at 10 o'clock, and you were there till 4 or something like that. I'd been round this island and I thought, that's the angle I want to shoot. But I thought, I need the sun to be a bit lower. 
It was too high, it was too steep. And all the colours are washed out when the, color, when the sun's directly above. And this is fairly close to the equator. So I worked out where to go. And just before four o'clock, I ran around. All the people had gone back. They were packing their bags. I walked out to the water and they were shouting for me. And Chisico came around the corner on the left. They said, come on, they were, they were waiting. But I knew I had to wait until the last minute. Otherwise, I wouldn't get the picture I wanted. Which meant annoying people, but hey, sometimes you do. The light again. This is Shinkansen in, in Japan, bullet train. I know where to go to take this picture. And I know what time of day to go. Again, the sun is at 8 o'clock or something like that. But it makes the picture. It, backlit, it's not nearly as good. It doesn't emphasise the speed. And I use a slow shutter speed to emphasise that. The picture is actually pin sharp. On the rivets down the front, it is pin sharp. But I, I used 15th or 8th of a second. It didn't just take one frame. I took several trains as they went past, and this was the best frame. You have to do that. Don't be... You have to get your picture in the bag and know it's going to be there. With digital, you can look at it. Don't look at the pictures all the time. It's the worst thing you do. You take a picture, you look at it. The best picture has just happened. And you put, it's gone. Concentrate on taking the pictures. You can look at them afterwards. You don't have to look at them then. If you need confirmation, then take a frame and just confirm that the exposures are right when it doesn't matter. But concentrate on taking what's in front of you taxi driver asleep in Kyoto. You can see there's a reflection on the left-hand side of the windscreen of a building, and I assume that's what's bouncing the light into the cab itself, into the driving seat. If you think about a car in that situation, it's, probably, it's quite shadowy there, but th that building is bouncing soft light into that face. Without that building, if the car hadn't been parked there in the right way, there wouldn't be a picture. It's seizing an opportunity, seeing it's the lighting that does it every time. Horses in the Camargue in France, taken through grasses, middle of the day. Don't take pictures in the middle of the day. Take them. You might get something quite good. This I took in I think, late 60s, I took this, on a long lens. But it, to me, it says heat, it says middle of the day, it says Camargue ponies. It's the light that makes it. It just looks right. Racing in Kalgoorlie in Western Australia a couple of years ago. Can't do anything about light in this situation, but you can work out where it looks good. And thoroughbred horses, when they're buffed up and polished, look fantastic. They've got the most amazing sheen on their coats. This is what I mean about being addicted to light. <laughs> you, you notice every factor of what it does. So you get yourself in the right position and shoot. Another picture of horses and a donkey or one horse. That horse is Red Rum, which won the Grand National three times. And I was allowed to play around with him in the field. And this was his friend, Andy, the donkey. But he was a lovely animal. But look at the colours on, on the horse's coat. This was the, the racehorse of the 20th century. 